Spokane police officers are looking into Union Pacific after a man was hit by a train. Passengers on a Delta flight are safe this morning after an emergency landing on a remote island in Alaska. This morning we look into what happened. Your recycling bins may be overflowing if you live in Moscow. That is because sanitation workers are cracking down on what can be collected. 7 a.m. on our Wednesday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News on the CW22. I'm Jen York. Brittany Bailey has the week off. Well, right now we are tracking some developing snow showers throughout central Washington. Evan Ronnie's in the Weather Center. What do people need to know if maybe they're traveling today? on this holiday hangover, right? Yeah, right. It looks like uh, if you're traveling over I-90, you may be encountering a little bit of snow, especially as you mentioned through central Washington. And those snow showers are going to be picking up throughout eastern Washington and north Idaho. I'd say by about noon or 1 p.m. is when we start to see some of those showers push in. Uh, we may see a light snow shower or two before then, but as far as the accumulating totals of one to two inches, that'll come in the afternoon and evening hours. We'll give you a little bit of a closer look. You can see they're kind of developing and then clearing out and they're very light in size, but we're expecting it to become much more widespread as the afternoon approaches. So here's that 12 hour forecast. Temperatures will make their way to about 34 degrees. Chances of snow increase by about 4 and 5 p.m. to 80 percent. That's where we're looking at your strongest chances. Outside right now, though, still, still struggling to get into the 30s. We're at 28 degrees. Winds have calmed down. They were originally in the five mile per hour range. As we go towards the afternoon when those snow showers move in, these numbers could jump up to maybe seven or eight mile per hour winds, but otherwise we're not looking at anything too significant. I'll throw things over to Amber Rustwishan who's checking up on what the roads look like as of 7 a.m. Hi, Amber. Evan, good morning. Well, we're taking a look at different parts of I-90 right now, and as you can see, there's more cars on the roadway than we saw earlier this morning, but we're not seeing any major delays or congestion. So if you are going to hop on either the eastbound or westbound lanes alongside these other drivers, you should be good to go speed-wise, uh, but I will keep an eye out in case any delays do start to form. That's all I have for now, so I will go ahead and send it back to the studio. Amber, thank you. 702 now. Well, one man is dead after being hit by a train in Spokane. He was initially taken to the hospital in critical condition, but later died from his injuries. It happened near 3rd Avenue and Sunset Boulevard in Brown's edition. Police say the man was not a railroad employee or anyone who was supposed to be near the tracks. The man was hit by a Union Pacific train. Officers will be investigating the speed of that train, among other things. Delta passengers are trying to get back on track this morning. Their flight from Beijing to Seattle was diverted to a remote island in Alaska. A Delta spokesperson says there was an issue with the engine. Our sister station in Seattle looked into that situation and has more on what happened. Flight 128 left Beijing bound for Seattle, but out over the ocean, Delta says pilots encountered a potential engine issue and diverted to Shemya, Alaska, a remote piece of land in the Aleutian Islands more than 1,400 miles from Anchorage. The only place to land there is the runway at Erickson Air Station. It used to be a key refueling stop for aircraft, and as of 2009, according to the Department of Defense, it was home to missile warning and space surveillance systems and a convenient and potentially life-saving stop in an area of the world where there are no other options for aircraft with infrastructure flight emergencies. As for this flight, Delta says it was a Boeing 767-300ER with 194 passengers on board. They were picked up by a second aircraft. In a statement, Delta apologized for the delay and said the safety of our customers and crew is always Delta's top priority. 704 now. Power is now restored for nearly all customers impacted by a tornado in western Washington. More than 300,000 homes and businesses lost power during that storm. Puget Sound Energy crews have been working around the clock to restore those outages. Unfortunately, a small number of customers were without power on Christmas. A spokesperson for PSE says the depth of damage really set crews back. Wind took out tall trees in that area, and those trees knocked down power lines and even took out some power poles. The spokesperson says that type of damage takes longer to fix. More than 2 million Chinook salmon fry are headed to a hatchery in Gig Harbor. Leaders with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife are trying to replace salmon loss during a power outage two weeks ago. Six million fry died during that power outage. The new salmon are now coming from six other hatcheries. They will be released from the Gig Harbor hatchery next May. 
State leaders know this transfer will not replace the salmon they lost, but it will help with salmon runs this summer. Migrating gray whales will be passing along the Oregon coast this winter. Visitors and volunteers are taking advantage of the opportunity during this year's Winter Whale Watch Week. The five-day event is put on by the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department. It starts tomorrow and ends at the end of the month. About 20,000 gray whales are headed south to Baja, Mexico. During that event, volunteers will be lined up along the coast to count the number of whales swimming by. The gray whales will make a return trip in late March as they make their way to Alaska in the spring. Sanitation workers in Moscow are cracking down on recycling violations. So far, workers tagged more than 1,600 recycling cards since November 1st. That is about 50 violations every collection day. The Moscow City Council voted in August to restrict items accepted. And it seems like neighbors are still adjusting to those changes. A friendly reminder, plastic bags and aluminum foil are no longer accepted. Well, now that Christmas is over, the cleanup begins. We're talking about the wrapping paper, the ribbons, and of course, Christmas trees. When you clean them up, you want to make sure to, to dispose of them properly. You may be tempted to recycle bows, but they are made from a paper plastic mixture, mixture and that means it does not work when trying to create cardboard. Same goes for ribbons, so don't throw either of those in the recycling. Now you can recycle most wrapping paper. However, if it is made from metallics, it has glitter or it has velvet on it, throw it in the trash. And if you did a lot of online shopping this holiday season, cardboard boxes may be starting to pile up in your home. Online purchases now make up 9% of all U.S. retail sales. That is according to the Department of Commerce. All of those sales mean more individual boxes being shipped to customers' homes and in turn more boxes that need recycling. Cardboard is great to recycle. Just make sure to break down the boxes beforehand. And then there's the Christmas tree. Whether you like to quickly dispose of it or maybe have it up into the new year, it has to come down eventually. Artificial trees are not recyclable. But if you have a real tree, it may be able to be recycled unless it's flocked. Recycling center workers ask that you take off as much tinsel as well. 707 now. The City of Spokane is ready to help you clean up when the holiday season is over. The City is offering free curbside pickup to get rid of those not so fresh Christmas trees. Free curbside pickup starts tomorrow and goes through Friday, January 11th. The city will accept trees up to six feet in height. Now, if your tree is taller than that, you will have to cut it in half. Just place your tree on your regularly scheduled garbage pickup day. Place it outside. Trees collected curbside will be chipped and composted. Makes it easy. 708 now on our Wednesday morning. Well, just because Christmas is over does not mean the holiday sales stop. Today, Deal Boss Matt Granite shows us some of the best Boxing Day deals on the market. And we're starting to see the sun come up on our Wednesday morning, and Christmas is over, but it looks like there may be some snow in the forecast for today. We'll let you know when to expect it and just how much of it to expect after the break. Yes, I've done a hundred things.